In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is in our midst. Good morning, and it's so good to see all of you, especially for those who are able for the first time to join us in person and pray with us. And for the newcomers, welcome. And it's nice to have you among us. Hopefully you will feel at home in our community. Uh, today, it's not only that we are facing one of the most known uh, readings from the Gospel, in which we hear about Christ walking on the water. We all have heard of people who try to do the same thing just to prove that they are godly or they are able to do something extraordinary. But also we see the story here of Peter himself trying to walk on the water when he asked Christ, bid me to come to you, and then he was able until he was starting to drown because he left he, he moved his eyes away from Christ. And how, how many times in our lives we feel that we are walking on the waters. Our lives themselves sometimes look very uh, windy. There's a lot of waves beating us from each side and we feel despair or we're so tired. We feel sometimes we are drowning because of everything that's happening in our personal lives or when we watch the news or see the circumstances around us or people who are suffering here and there, near and far. And probably for some of our community, the explosion in Beirut even added more struggle because they have family there and friends who some of them passed and some of them were hurt or lost their livelihood and the shelter that they had before even a very desperate situation that was there in the country. But also we don't have to look too far to see that sometimes the people around us, just in our households, in our neighborhoods, in our country, there are many people who are drowning. Life has been tough to them to the point where you can see the numbers of people who have depression, mental illness, addictions, substance abuse, or behaviors that are self-destructive. So all of these are signs of something that's happening and that more people are drowning through life, the life that they are living. And it's very hard to do what Christ did when he talked to Peter and said to him, why did you doubt? Why didn't you have faith in me? And that's why you started to drown. Sometimes this is what we do. We blame the victim. We blame the person who is drowning for drowning. And sometimes we forget that our role is to extend a hand and, a hand and say to them, stand up, we're here next to you. Actually, if we look around, it's because of the pandemic now that we recognize that we cannot survive on our own. Even to protect ourselves, we have to have other people do their own share so that the spread of disease may stop hopefully soon. And through the pandemic, we recognized that every stability, every peace that we thought we had before seems to be vanishing. Everything that we thought is going to be stable for more years, we discovered that it's gone. Everything we, we thought that is happening in our life and can continue is gone. Everything that we took for granted, almost gone. And no more we need other things to beat us at this time because we ourselves are feeling that we are losing the peace that we already had at some point or we thought we had. But sometimes we forget that the source of peace, the only source and the true source of peace is not things that we have or our careers or things that we do in our lives or own in our lives that will bring us peace and stability. We probably at this time recognize that we need something that is much deeper 
that will give us that peace that we are in desperate need for, especially at this time. The point that I am trying to make, that it is very difficult to, to blame the victim because sometimes we are the people who are drowning. Sometimes we want to admit it, sometimes we don't. And when we see other people drowning, we forget that we might be in their shoes at some point. So the whole point that the church is trying to communicate also through the story of Christ walking on the water, but also through the epistle that we have just heard, that the temple of God is us, is we, people who believe in Christ. The temple of God is not just a building, it's a community. And Peter, who is the rock on which the faith was supposedly to be built, is a representative of every one of us, together. Together, it's the community is not a collection of individual people who come to church, do their thing, and leave afterwards. They quiet their sense of guilt, they did what they wanted to quiet God, they did their duty to God, and that's it. But we as a community stand together. Here, what I'm trying to emphasize, that we are in this all together. We cannot survive what's happening around us unless we think in the mindset of a community. Because specifically this pandemic showed us that no one can survive on their own. Unless my neighbor, my coworker, the guy who is stacking the shelves in the grocery store are not doing their share, I am at risk. Everyone has to do something for all of us to survive this. And it would be very harsh for anyone to think that I don't care, even if I get the disease and die, that's fine. Because it's not just you who's gonna be affected. There are probably people around you who are going to be affected. So standing together, our church gives us one way to restore our peace one way to bring the healing that we need, especially at this time. And we recognize that sometimes the healing that we need is not the healing of our bodies. We are all staying healthy, hopefully, staying at home, not being affected by the disease, and we're not even having flu, the regular flu that we have to have, we usually have during this time, just because we're not seeing anyone. So we are safe, we're not sick. But are we in a state of mind that we are peaceful? Are we really feeling the peace that we need, especially during this time? And you notice that in the service, every time the priest comes out and says, for a couple times during the liturgy, peace be unto you all. It's a reminder again and again that the peace that we need is not the peace that we think we have. It's the peace that comes from above. That is the stable peace, that despite what, hap what happens around us, we still have it. We're still able to walk on the waters and don't move our eyes away from Christ. That's what we need. But I don't want to blame the victim, but I would want to tell you about one sacrament that the church has as a source of healing, the healing that we need at this time. Although this sacrament, mainly confession, has this caricature picture in our minds because of the media and because of movies, that someone goes to confession, there are a lot of jokes about confession. But actually, if we get to the heart of confession in our church, it's not about telling your sins. It's not about enumerating what we have done wrong. Confession is coming to someone and say, I'm not feeling okay, but it's still okay. I am not doing well, but I am willing to talk about it. Imagine you go to your doctor and tell them a few things of your symptoms, and then the doctor prescribes you the medication. Would you be convinced that the doctor did everything they needed to do? 
Most of you would say no, because that doctor did not really investigate those symptoms, did not understand where they come from, for how long you had these symptoms, what other lab work they have to do so that they discover what is the true reason of the symptoms that you have. The same things ha happen with confession. Sins are not the diseases. Sin is not the disease. Sin is a symptom. The symptom of something that's much deeper. And what is much deeper is that we don't have our focus right. That's why we are troubled when we see things around us. When our life is disrupted as it is right now, we lose that peace. So probably not by blaming the victim that we are not focused, but we are not using the resources that our church is giving us, which one of them, it's not the only one, but one of them is confession. And not only lay people have to go to confession, priests have to go to confession, because we are all prone to lose our focus and not be able to really have the peace that we need to have in our lives today. Sometimes the culture around us is very much focused on looking good. You ask someone, how are you doing? They say, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm doing very great, right? And sometimes you know, you notice that this person is not doing, doing well. But out of respect for their privacy, we tend to just not ask them anymore and leave those people drown in their lives. Sometimes we do the same thing. We are asked, how are you doing? And we just try to have this face that everything is fine, we're smiling, and inside us, we're not doing very fine. One funny thing that happened last week, I was pulling out of the driveway, driveway and I had my daughters outside. I, I, I will not mention the name because otherwise I have to sleep outside the house tonight if I say who said what they said. But a neighbor was passing by, I rolled down the, the window, I, I greeted her, I said, how are you doing? But sure enough, I was continuing to drive. And my girl in the back said, why did you ask how are you doing if you did not, did not wait for the answer? <laughs> That's right. This is what we do all the time. How are you doing does not mean anything. That does not mean that we care about what the other person is doing. And I'm afraid that even in our community, we don't train ourselves to do that more intentionally. When we ask someone, how are you doing? And insist that we have to know. It's not about their privacy, because when we see red flags, we have to say something. The other way around is to go, if someone asks us, how are you doing? It's okay to say, thank God I'm doing well, but I'm not feeling well. We need that. We need that because otherwise we're all going to drown in the circumstances we live in right now. So the church gives us confession not because it wa she wants to embarrass us. Confession is coming to a priest that we trust for healing. And that person himself is in struggle to be healed as well. Unless we expose our sicknesses, our wounds, will not be able to be healed. And that's all it does. Coming to a priest or to someone we trust is helpful in as much as we are open. There's nothing embarrassing about us. Exactly as when you go to your doctor and you have embarrassing symptoms, you better say what you're having. Otherwise, he would not or she would not be able to help you. The same thing for the priest. He's not here to judge. Confession is not about saying what we did wrong, because it's fine. Everyone does everything wrong. What we're coming here is for <coughs> healing. And the priest, like the doctor, gets sick. We're all going to get sick. We all have our own struggles. And it's OK to say, I'm not OK, because we need it at this time. We stand as a community in as much as we focus our eyes on Christ. And we need each other. The priest in confession is a representative of the entire community that we trust. He's not going to say anything to anyone else, but he is a representative of the entire community.
that we all stand together in this. We're not just individuals coming in, quieting God for doing our duties and leaving. We are here because we are struggling. We know we are broken. We know we need peace and healing. And the church is offering us a big toolkit so that we can do that and we get closer. And we, as Peter did, refocus our lives. Sometimes we are distracted by so much. And so when the waves and wind come upon us, we just forget and start to drown. What we do through confession, through coming to church, to being here, to, through praying, is to refocus and really have our eyes on the right spot, which is Christ. Because otherwise, we would not be able to continue our life in isolation, alone, without the support of our community, without the peace that only comes from Christ through our struggles and despite our struggles, because we are going to struggle no matter what, but it's only from Christ that we can get the peace that we need desperately, especially during this time. Amen.